of uh, developing this, getting in front of folks like y'all, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And it's just tweaking here and tweaking there and finally came up with something that's worked really well. Uh, I've been doing fire and safety for about 25 years. So I've been working on this for about 10. So really got it where I'm really proud of it. Uh, we actually make the stuff ourselves right here in Texas. This is a Texas product through and through. So it comes from folks just like you giving feedback to me, me going back to the manufacturing floor and making it better. But the idea behind it is, is it gives you two advantages. One, injury prevention. There are too many firefighters, EMTs getting hurt whenever you have to manually lift and carry patients. The second one is versatility. It's one product that does multiple things versus one product that does one thing. And most of the competitors that I have, it's one product that does one thing. And the tarps with handles. Yeah, the main sacks. Or main sacks. In my opinion, they actually contribute to injuries. And I can explain that more here in just a little bit. Uh, but you're very limited on what it can do. It doesn't do a lot for patient care. Uh, if you're on a really long carry, a lot of times what happens is your patient ends up in the fetal position and you end up with a sack. Uh, especially if you're going downstairs, something like that. But the idea behind this is, is you're gonna have multiple handles in multiple locations and you're able to configure this based on the needs of the call. And it can do six things. One, lift and carry a supine patient. Lift and carry a seated patient, which is your normal lift assist. Patients just in the floor, just need to get into a chair or bed. They're not hurt. Uh, that's a big cause of injuries. Uh, another one is a lateral transfer. Another big cause of injuries. Do a single person rescue, so it's good for active shooter, mass casualty type situations. Carry a patient up and down the stairs and a single person rescue up. Did I say that one already? Anyway, there's, there's six moves. Anyway, so this is it right here. Weighs about two and a half pounds. You can put 14 people around it and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a little bit. Uh, the tarps with handles, again, you know, their handles go right around the edge. You're very limited on what you can do. Uh, going back to whenever I was on shift, I like to lift weights whenever I was uh, on shift. So I designed my handles like weightlifting straps. You put your hands into the loops, you wrap your hands back around, and now that weight's carried across the back of the hand instead of in the palm of the hand. If you can think back to the longest carry you had on, with a patient on a backboard, your hand probably wore out pretty quick. You may have even had to set the patient down and switch sides so you can switch hands. Uh, well, with this, it's very comfortable and very stable. You can actually carry your patient. I don't recommend that you do it, but it's so stable you can actually carry with your hands just like this right here. You don't actually have to grab a hold. Uh, another advantage with these kinds of handles is that you're able to turn your hand out just a little bit. And what that does is it relieves the pressure on this part of the arm, the weaker muscle right here, and allows you to start to use these larger forearm muscles and bicep muscles. So you're a lot less likely to get hurt right there. So just the handle design alone has a lot of injury prevention in it. Uh, was uh, demoing for a fire department about a month ago, and they said if they had a firefighter go out with an injury right here to his forearm, he was out for a couple of months. So uh, it, it's, it's a good advantage to have that ability. Uh, the first thing I want to show y'all is how to lift a seated patient, so your typical lift assist. Would you mind coming right back to the knee? Uh, we're going to turn it over. It's the only one that we need to turn it over. All right, we're going to take these low lift base handles right here, and we're just going to lay them over just like that, and start rolling real tight toward the center. Right there. And what we're going to do is expose these high lift base handles right here. So kind of just about a half a turn, but there you go. And you'll see what we've done is we've created a little bit of a sling right here. We, uh, the old way of lifting a seated patient is, you know, you get two people opposite each other, hook an arm and a leg, and you stand up and you go put your patient wherever you need to put them, or you come around behind your patient and hook them underneath the arms and do the old Chicago lift. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was demoing for a fire department, and a firefighter was telling me that he got MRSA on his forearms. And what he did was the Chicago lift, 
And when it went up underneath the lady's arms, she had an infection underneath her arms. So he was out for a while. This allows you to get some space between you and your patient. So the way that you would load your patient is if they were sitting right here with their legs out this way, sitting upright, you would just slide them underneath their legs to their, this edge is right next to their rear. And you would just rock your patient back and forth and shimmy it underneath your patient to their tailbone. Right there. So, would you mind coming over here and sit down right here? Here you are, huh? Yeah, that's the way it works. Oh. Come back about there. About two more inches. There we go. Now, go ahead and put your hands into those loops. Mm -hmm. now, don't actually grab the, the handles. Just pull back and let that weight, feel that weight on your wrist. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you've got it loaded right. Okay, now you can grab. And whenever you lift, go ahead and turn your wrist in just a little bit. Okay? Three. One, two, three. Oh, I was standing on it. <laughs> I knew it was heavier than what it needed. <laughs> but, now, what a lot of people will do whenever they, they lift is they tend to, come on up with it, they tend to do this right here. Mm -hmm. And that's a product of using the tarps with handles. Mm -hmm. so go ahead and relax. Feel the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's an easy... It's an easy thing to lift. Now we can go sitting in a chair or on a bed or whatever, but what I want you to do is take your right arm mm -hmm. and we're going to stand him up. So lift straight up with your right arm. So yeah, I'm already able to stand up. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, now we can go back down. Leave your side rolled up. Just let it lay back down on the floor. You can take your hands out. Okay. Now let's say we had a really wide patient and we needed more material to work with. Just roll one side up. Yeah. Or if you've got a patient that's further down from where you're standing somewhere in some kind of pit or whatever and you needed more material to sling down to where the patient is you just leave it all the way rolled out and you use your four corner handles to get down to where your patient is i'm thinking even some a big patient in a bathtub we're not talking about them being very deep but you need every bit of material mm -hmm. to get uh get it around them and get them you know up the side of the both sides of the tub. So I mean, that's that could, that would be needed that whole thing. There was a guy that, that asked me a question the other day, and I had to really kind of think about how to, because uh, he was trying to challenge, he was trying to sharpshoot me, you know. And we, but it was a good valid question. He said, "What if I have a patient who's really large uh, in a bathtub, and I've got to get them up out of there? How am I going to get them up?" And I, I thought about it for a minute, and what I came up with is you fold this thing in half. Make a sling out of it. Put this around behind your patient as they're laying down in the bathtub and lift them up into the seated position. And then you can figure that what we just did in a seated position, you stand them up and you go get them in the hall or whatever. And you reconfigure them and carry them in whatever position you want to carry them. Right. Now, uh, what I want to show actually it would work better if we have about two. More sets of hands. Godfrey, come in here, sir. I'm going to show you how to lift and carry a brother uh, William to come a here patient. Yes. Somebody just run out or Yeah, you can just run out of the room. And the way that you would load it is you would do just like a backboard. You log over your patient, slide it underneath, log on the back, you center them on there. No, really, no big deal at all. Um, Chief, mm -hmm. well, I don't want to make you do that. You know. Oh, I don't know. You don't mind laying down? I don't mind laying down. I, okay. I, I, I prefer laying down. <laughs> <laughs> it works out well. Nobody's going to drop you either <laughs> now. If, if you use the rookie, they might get dropped. Uh, yeah. Now come down about four inches. There we go. We want to make sure that the head stays in this basket okay. right up here. You don't want the head to go beyond the edge of the stretcher. Uh, if you do, then you know, no back said, cock back. Uh, one advantage that you have here over the tarps with handles is you got the safety straps. I'm going to go underneath my arms. Right there. Once I get here, I'll show you how to, how to lift. But there are so many different ways that you can lift a supine patient depending on how large the patient is. Uh, you can lift up to a thousand pound 
patient. And that's really more for the responder than it is for the stretcher. The stretcher can be way in excess of that. But the way that you put the four or the 14 people is you got your four corner handles and then you have five extenders on each side of the room. Just a second. Come in. Howdy. Yeah, you too, please. Sir, would you mind come over here to the head? You'll come opposite of me right here. With your left hand, grab that black handle on the corner. And with your right hand, grab that black handle. So, as you were saying, put your hands through it. Yeah, put that your hands into the loop. There you go. Now, don't there actually grab go. it. That's it. Yeah. Pull back and let the, feel that weight on the back of your wrist. Okay, that's when you know you've got it loaded right. Now, you and I, we're mm -hmm. going to grab those same two handles that we just used, those base handles. Right. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sir. All right, now we get in that good lifting position. I mean, you and I are going to carry all the weight. Okay. At the head, go ahead and call it. Three, two, one. Yeah, you're not going to feel like you're lifting hard with anything. Yeah, Y'all probably don't feel like you have anything. I should be able to do <laughs> You AC, man. You know, I should. Sure. That's right, man. You can get there with these down. Anyways, but. Oh, the old sham maneuver. Hey, uh, so can you get that fan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can even start rocking them like that. Follow me, everybody. Yeah. Sleep, fan me. Yeah. 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 Now we go back down. So that's one way to lift. If you have a more narrow patient, that's probably most appropriate. But we're going to slide up about two feet, and y'all going to come over here. Now what we're going to do is deploy these extenders right underneath the shoulder. There's a tab. Leave that one there. Do the one underneath the knee and the one underneath his ankle. Oh. Now you and I, mm -hmm. just to show you the difference here, you and I are going to grab this black handle on this side, and then the yellow handle here. All right. Y'all grab the it. black handle closest to the foot. Do I grab these or am I out? No, you're out. You, yeah, we oh, you got it. Here. This one here? Yep. No, no, the uh, right, yeah, there. right to the on the other handle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab the yellow handle right there. Now what this is going to do is help us keep the patient level. Mm -hmm. Now also. You're a lot taller than what I am. If you were opposite of me, mm -hmm. I may want to grab these black handles and you may want to grab the yellow handles just to keep the patient level. Right. Okay. On three. One, two, three. Now, everybody kind of started to do this right here. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and go on up. The reason that people do this is because with the, the tarps with handles, you've got so much material to work with, you've got to come up like this to clear your patient from the ground. All right. Go ahead and go back down now. You'll feel the relief in your shoulders. Oh, yeah. It's instant. Mm -hmm. okay. You feel like you could carry me around like this all day all long? Day. Yeah. All okay. day, every day. Well, <laughs> now we need one of these. And it, what you can do is if you had a larger patient, you could actually deploy these center mm -hmm. extenders, middle extenders, and put two more responders there to help carry that load. Just like you and I had most of the weight right. when we were here in the middle, it just relieves some stress on these guys. There we go. Missed it. <laughs> now, as I was saying with those tarps and handles, because you've got so much material there, you've got to come up to here on a normal patient because they're not using up very much material. Whenever you get a larger patient, they got more material that they're using. You're still coming up here because of muscle memory. Mm -hmm. You're doing it without thinking, and you're adding you know, all those all that stress that we were feeling just a second ago. Imagine that being compounded with a 400, 500 pound patient, right. Right? and that's why, in my opinion, they actually contribute to the injuries. With this, you're able to comfortably carry your patient with your arms by your side. That's a big difference. But single person rescue, just imagine all, everything's stored uh, back where it's supposed to be. Um, load your patient just like you would a backboard. You could grab these four corner handles right here and drag your patient out. Or you could deploy these extenders and drag your patient. Or if you had a D-ring on the back of the utility belt, put a carabiner in. You drag your patient out and you got your hands free. So you got options there. Just combine, do y'all still use backboards? Mm -hmm. Okay, on a regular basis? 
Uh, it's just depends. under certain circumstances. Yeah, it depends on what the injuries. Okay. Uh, what two ways you could put if you're using like a scoop or something, mm -hmm. you could put the hilt underneath the scoop and scoop your patient and then slide the scoop on top of the hilt. And then what you can do, let's let's it's gonna make more sense if we just put these back down. Now what you could do is you could slide your scoop on top of the hill and then just take your four corner handles and run them up through the four corner handles of the, of the backboard. And instead of having to go all the way here and really have to reach way down, put all that stress on your lower back and on my shoulders, you've extended your reach just enough to get into this position. So you're using those stronger leg muscles to get the patient up or what you could do if you're just using a regular backboard is lay your hilt on top of the backboard, log on your patient, slide it underneath, center your patient again, and now the hilt is between the patient and the backboard. And you can do the same four corner handles or you take your extenders, if you need to lift from the sides and run them up through your side hand holes on your backboard. Now the advantage of having this in this configuration is whenever you get to the hospital and you're having to transfer your patient off of your cot onto your ER bed, instead of reaching all the way over mm -hmm. that ER bed and grabbing that sheet, what you've got are these extenders that you can stand more upright. You got your legs underneath you. You got your spine in that support position like it's designed to be used. And you grab those extenders and you basically just do a lap pull and you slide your patient off the cot on the door bed. Another really awkward position is whenever you're doing a lateral transfer off your cot on the ER bed is grabbing the, at the foot or the head and having to do that mm -hmm. shimmy around the end of the ER bed. Mm -hmm. okay. You're eliminating all that just by having those extenders to slide your patient up. That's the majority of it right here. But you see, it's one product that does multiple things. The more you use it, the more you realize it can do for you, the more likely these younger guys are going to get to the end of their career not as beat up. Mm -hmm. And they can actually enjoy the years that they've worked for. You know, enjoy that retirement. So. Yeah, but not any of y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're washable, obviously. Yep. These, this is our, our this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. This is the newest one that we have. Uh, I like this just because in my mind, I like to buy something that's going to last. Uh, so I built these to last. You can just throw it in a washing machine, 